Now, it's been 26 years since the Spice Girls high kicked into our lives with oh their debut gosh. single, Wannabe. They put girl power on the map and defined 90s pop music. As she releases her first autobiography, Mel C joins us to share her amazing life story and tell us what it was really like to be Sporty Spice in one of the world's most iconic girl groups. Please welcome Mel C. Oh. <laughs> God, that took us back to such a good place watching that. Oh, it's oh. so nice, isn't it? Did it take it? you back to a good place? You know what? It does. I think when I look back over those moments, it's all the fun stuff. I yeah. remember, mm -hmm. and I was so conscious doing the book because obviously everybody's life is so full of different things. Mm. I didn't, you know, there were dark times. Yeah. But I didn't want to dwell on it too much. It was important to go there, but I didn't want to forget how much we need to celebrate the good stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, the book is who I am, and I know it wasn't a casual decision for you to write your autobiography, was it? No, it took a long time. Why now? You know, I think I spent many, many years feeling quite scared to go back to some of those times. And in my head, I've, I've always seen an autobiography by somebody like myself is maybe a bit tabloidy, a bit salacious, and I've had a pretty rough ride with the tabloid media. So it made me nervous. But then I was on stage with the Spice Girls 2019, we did stadium shows, and it was such an incredible moment. And I think for all of us girls, we just looked out and we, we realised the impact we'd had. You know, mm. this generation of people, there was young people there who were just discovering us for the first time. And I just started to reflect really differently. Mm. And I was scared of becoming Sporty Spice, but then I was like, I don't become her, I am her, it's in here, she's yeah. always here. Mm. So I just started to accept all these different aspects of myself. And it inspired the album I released in 2020. And then it just felt natural to, for the book to come at that point. I yeah. think it's so exciting to hear your version of events as well, because like we all just said, we watch those videos and it, for us, it's rose tinted goggles. Every single moment of that what was broadcast, it brings back nostalgia, memories, things that make us happy. Mm -hmm. Whereas for you, that would have been a totally different experience. And especially at that time, for women in the music industry, mm -hmm. for contracts, mm -hmm. like all of the pressures that you would have been under back yeah. then, yeah. is so important, for, I think, for us to hear about. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we can't take anything away. You know, what the Spice Girls, what we achieved, it was incredible. You know, we we did. We we broke barriers. We, yeah. I think we you kind of opened political. doors. Yeah, yeah kind mm. of. We so naively, you know, we were blazing this trail, and it was really because of the experience we were having in the music industry. We were, you know, we were faced with sexism really early on. You know, tell that girl bands don't sell. We couldn't be on the front cover of magazines because they wouldn't wow. sell like the boy bands would. And that put fire in our bellies. And thank goodness for that, because it meant we had a platform then. We went out there and we changed things. Mm. That's we what really girl power I loved all that. Yeah, we were funny. talking about that, weren't we? Mm. When I was reading that, that in the book, and they're like, the way that you just pushed against everything and this, uh, every single thing, you 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 fought for it actually, didn't you? I mean, yeah. the fact they wanted you all dressed identically. I loved all those stories. All the sliding door moments mm, that you yeah. had, where you just nearly all missed it. It was so destined. Mm, yeah. I love the way that you said you always had this feeling, like when you first saw the audition, the advert for the audition. You just had a feeling about it, didn't you? You knew this was going to be something big. Do you know what's early. funny? Because because you're talking about this right now. Yeah. So we have a friend in common. Yes, we do. And our friend Rachel, yeah. lovely Rachel, who's in Ibiza. Yeah. She was my best friend at college. Yeah. She's still one of my best friends. And we were together the day at Danceworks. We were auditioning for, I think, a cruise, and I was handed the flyer. Yeah. And she is the person I turned to and I said, wow. that's it, that's what I'm going to do. Oh, no, I've got the goosebumps when I read that. Then you got ill and you, you couldn't go for yeah. their second audition. And it just, but it all, it feels as you read the book that the stars were just aligning. Yeah. And it but it went back happen. further than that, didn't it? Because yeah. sitting in school with your daughter, yeah. you were writing... Melanie Chisholm is going to be a superstar. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, right. that there, I love you? that. I, I really don't see myself as a precocious child. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't sound like that, does it? You know what? I discovered performing really early in my life. 
you know, like many people do. And for me, it was kind of, it was escape. You know, I had a wonderful home, but my mum and dad did divorce when I was young. Mm. And it just put me in this place. I'm an only child of my mum and dad. They've gone on to remarry and, and, and have families. So sometimes I felt quite isolated. Mm. And sometimes I felt a bit of a burden. So being on stage or being in dance class, that kind of gave me my space in the mm. world. Your but also yeah. through, through, through the book and through your experience, that loneliness comes back quite often, doesn't it? And that imposter syndrome. Yeah. I, was, I found it so sad, the story you talked about as a young girl when you, were, you had a fight with somebody and you went home and you wanted to get stronger and you wanted to build muscle. I loved that. And then this, this awful thing that this person said to you about your thighs, mm -hmm. this one sentence and that triggered mm -hmm. Years of you then dealing with an eating disorder, which yeah. you've spoken about. Wow. Yeah, no, it was tricky. It was really early on in the Spice Girls journey, and somebody within the industry um, commented, I did a backflip, and they said, oh, I'm surprised you can do a backflip with thighs like that. Oh my God. And I'd been to performing arts college, I'd spent hours and hours looking in a mirror, like being criticized, criticizing myself, mm. but I'd never. I never had any body image issues at that point. You know, I was young, I was fit. You know, I was, I was kind of what we would deem as slim, you know. Yeah, um, but at that point, I think because what I was embarking on with the Spice Girls was so important to me yeah. that the thought I didn't look Right, yeah. was was so like terrifying to me, which I suppose would have played into the imposter syndrome. This is how I could lose yeah. this. Yeah, right. absolutely. Yeah. Like, do I deserve this? Am, am I right to to be doing this? And is it going to work for me? So that started me, you know, just kind of eliminating food groups, cutting down. It started quite innocently. Yeah. And then I think there was other catalysts along the way. Mm -hmm. You know, being in the media, being photographed yeah, constantly, you know. In general. Yeah. Kind of Having thing. some control over your life, I think that's yeah. what yeah. happened. Yeah. That's I can control thing. this. Yeah. I can't control all that. There was also yeah. a moment you documented in the, the book you had a bit of a fallout, I don't know, an exchange of words with, I think it was Victoria, mm -hmm. I'm not sure, and you immediately went to the place that, oh, my God, that's it, I've blown yeah. it, I'm out. Sorry, I, I'm grinning. <laughs> <laughs> because it is quite a funny story, <laughs> but the consequences weren't that funny. So, yeah, we, we were at the Brits in 1996, and nobody knew us at this point. We didn't release yeah. Wannabe until the summer of that year. So, February-ish, 96, we go to the Brits, we have a little bit of champagne, and um, as we're leaving, yeah, there's a little kerfuffle between me and Victoria. Nothing major, but I tell her where to go. And... <laughs> 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 and the next day... Um, you know, it was a huge issue. And I understand why, because, you know, we were entering into this world where we had to stick together. Mm. You know, we United. had to support each other, yeah. So, like, anything like that was just not a good thing to do. But and isn't was... that annoying? Because also you were you were a group of women were doing things your own way, and that's nothing what happened, and yet you were brought into line. Yeah. You can mm. be you can be these wild things. It's working really well for us, yeah. but can you actually really do as do as yeah. you're told as well? well yeah. That must have been so difficult working. There's dynamics, isn't there? Yeah. You know, with anything, with friendship groups, with yeah. colleagues, you know, within bands, it's like but that. That's, I think it's so normal, isn't it, to love your friends and hate them sometimes as well. Like, that is a <laughs> normal really thing. But it's but... the people you you're closest to, isn't it? That you yeah. do you show your true colours to, because yeah. you know you can, because they're still going to love you anyway. Are you please tell me? Are you going to do a reunion, another one? I hope so. Oh, so oh. Yes. Oh. I hope so. Oh. I hope so. Oh. Jerry's fiftieth was so exciting. <laughs> How good is that? Yeah. <laughs> Into what I could be? But we feel so bad because Mel B couldn't make it. Oh. So we were all there having the best time on the dance floor, <laughs> and then Mel's like that. It's not like you're having fun. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Honestly, that's given hope. That's definitely There's given so many hope. There's some stories hope, in the book. I love the book. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Mel and Lucy, who I am. Mel, thanks so much for coming Thank in. Thank you. <laughs>